So the 98% of that sale, those funds belong to dad. That's why his application was denied. But the son just took off for Florida and just left and took dad's money. All right, let's... Okay, you understand covenant agree that is part of the planning process that you will be instructed to move, retitle, or liquidate certain assets in order to enact the game plan and that the game plan has been created with various tax investment and other consequences factored in and balanced against the overall goal of obtaining long-term care benefits as quickly as possible. And get to the highlighted portion. Nonetheless, it is extremely common for banking and financial professionals who are not regularly advising care assistance clients to provide resistance since it means they and their financial institutions will be lo losing future fees and earnings. For example, banks may vehemently advise you against liquidating or transferring bank CDs because you would lose your interest or stockbrokers will argue against liquidating stocks because of capital gains taxes or because they believe they can make more money in the long run. However, such advice rarely overrides the concerns of the thousands of dollars per month in assistance that would be obtained by following the game plan. Yeah, this happens all the time. You know, if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And if someone says, use a screw, that's ridiculous. You're supposed to use a nail for this. Well, no. Uh, we once had a client. I've written about it. I've done these stories before. I'm not going to go into the whole thing. But there were two things. Her broker did not want to liquidate and move stock or even just move stock. Just didn't want to move it because I can do better for you in the market than they can. If you think it's important for educational videos like this to get out there, then please help us out by subscribing to the channel. Well, we're not even talking about that. We're talking about getting it into an irrevocable trust. And so he filled her head with this, well, how much are you gonna make for me? Because my broker can get more. And I'm like, the point isn't that he could do more or less. We don't care if you put it in a coffee can. Well, we do care if you put it in a coffee can. We don't care if you just throw it into a savings account in the name of the trust. As long as it got into the trust, he was stopping all of that. And he didn't understand that really, I guess in this case, it was more than $12,000 a month that was going to be needed for care. He didn't balance any of that. And the banker don't liquidate those CDs now. Wait eight months. In eight months, you can, you know, the CDs are done. You're giving up $3,000 of accrued interest. That attorney doesn't know what he's talking about. That Medicaid planner is ridiculous. They don't know what they're doing. Again, $12,000 a month versus giving up the $3,000 in accrued interest. All of that was balanced. Yeah, you're going to lose your $3,000 of interest, but you're, in this case that I'm talking about, it was going to be close to $2,200 a month coming in from a veteran's benefit. And we were going to get further along in the five-year clock to end up taking care of actual long-term facility care uh, for skilled nursing that was going to be needed down the road. All of it out the window because... They convinced her not to move the assets because of $3,000 of interest or, oh, I can make more money in the market than they can if you just put it into a money market account. Yeah, but that's $144,000 per year going out the door to save $3,000 or interest or you can get a better rate of return. So this is why it's in there. And in addition that we're not responsible if you decide not to do this. And the other part of it is we are not being engaged to argue with or provide a care assistance education to outside financial and banking professionals. And that delays in enacting the game plan of these financial professionals, their institutional processes and the resulting lost time in deciding whether or not to follow the game plan is not the responsibility of the care assistance center. 
again, stuff ends up getting delayed for a couple of months, and then they realize, oh my gosh, we've lost out on twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. Why didn't you get? Whoa, 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 wait a minute. It was your banking professional, your financial professional that didn't want to give up control of the assets that caused the problem. All right. So let's move to the next one. You also further understand, covenant, and agree that you will consult with the Care Assistance Center LLC and its team members prior to selling any real estate, prior to distributing any funds to any estate beneficiaries prior to death, and prior to signing any long-term care facility contracts. You understand, covenant, and agree that without consulting the Care Assistance Center LLC and its team members that there may be negative consequences, including denial of benefits, adverse tax, or other financial consequences, or even charges for elder abuse from a federal, state, county, or municipal government agency or agencies. Look, we're not kidding around with this. This was a case where dad had basically purchased 98% of a son and daughter-in-law's house that was his primary residence. He was going to live there until he needed facility care. And he did end up needing facility care. And hand of God, I think it was only five days before they had some questions and talked with me. And I, so everything else is just status quo. Nothing's being changed in terms of the asset. Oh, no, no, everything's fine. Five days later, they sold the house and there was all that money there. And so Medicaid denied the application. I'm like, well, why'd you deny the application? Well, they sold his primary residence and there was all that money there. Really? The other part of this, somehow or another, the real estate closing attorneys only put the check in the name of the son. So the 98% of that sale, those funds belong to dad. That's why his application was denied. But the son just took off for Florida and just left and took dad's money. And it's like, well, that's, that's fine, right? I, hey, I had to sell. I got a good price. No. Last I heard... North Carolina's Medicaid office got, uh, I think, the Department of Justice involved uh, with elder abuse for stealing dad's money. And, well, there's nothing that we could do to help from that point. Ethical conflicts. Uh, the nature of most, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to read that piece of it. I'll explain it instead. When we do planning, typically it's for an individual or a couple, but they have to have a trusted person as their trustee. A ton of discretion. And I'm, I'm not talking about, oh, or, you know, invest this way or that way and the money's mom or dad. No, we're basically talking about mom and dad or mom or, mom or dad. They're taking all of their money, putting it into this trust where the trustee has sole discretion and... That child, typically a child, that trustee is also the beneficiary so they can take money out and put it in their pocket. Now, the idea is, okay, if mom or dad needs something, they'll take the money out, put it in their pocket, and turn around and spend it on mom or dad. There's an awful lot of trust there. Every now and then, not frequently, but just every now and then, we end up with someone that we don't believe they're looking out for mom or dad's best interests anymore. And that provision allows us to withdraw and say, look, we're not going to help you with anything because that would be like helping you steal the money that even though legally the trust says it's yours to do with and pull out if you need to. Morally, we're not going to help you steal mom and dad's money. So that's what that provision is. And then finally, unauthorized practice of law. Uh, unfortunately, for time to time, recommendations by the law offices of Jeffrey G. Marsachi, PLLC, and also the Care Assistance Center, blah, blah, blah. Basically, um, 
when we talk about and provide advice on titling accounts appropriately and what the tax ID number is, it's critical that it's done exactly, exactly right. Look, you can have bank accounts that are joint with a right of survivorship, but that you don't need to put this in the trust. If the bank says you don't need to put this in this trust, you can just put your kids' names on the account. No. No. The plan calls for certain things to happen in a certain order and in a certain way and have certain tax ID numbers and things have to go exactly the right way in order for this to work well, not just for whatever transaction is happening, but to make sure the money is secured and really it's not going to have Medicaid look at it and say, oh yeah, that, that money belongs to mom or dad and now they have to spend it all down. Um, the example, uh, and this bank in its form is no longer around. I'm not going to say which one, but we had a lot of trouble with them before a change. Um, they insisted, even though we wrote it down, mom and dad had put money into an irrevocable trust a long, long time ago much more than the five-year time frame, the five-year clock, but they needed a new car. And so we did what we had to. We told the son, who was the trustee, all right, you want to use this money from the trust to buy mom and dad a car? That's fine. Take the money out, put it into that checking account called the filter account, have it go in, and then you turn around and write the check. And the person at the bank says, oh, you don't need to do that. That's that, that's redundant. No, the attorney seemed to do it. Don't, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Don't pay attention to him. Write the check from the trust directly to the car dealership. So, no, that's an instance where we would report them to the state bar for the unauthorized practice of law. So that clause that's up there. This is basically saying when something like that comes across our desk uh, that they're allowing us to report the person in the institution for the unauthorized practice of law. Basically, that would have put Medicaid for mom or dad in jeopardy because that check was written directly to buy a car form that was going to be titled in mom and dad's name. And the banker was like, he just didn't want to wait for the check to clear once and then clear again. And then the bank was like, we can't undo it. We can't undo it. The car dealership was good enough to undo it and take the check the right way, even though they already had the car. So... That, that was something where really that should have gone to the state bar, but, um, well, you know what, I'm not going to say whether or not that happened or will happen, but we reserve the right to do that. So that's, that's some of the major provisions that we actually put into our engagement agreement and the reasons why we do it. It's to make sure we're emphasizing very clearly that, look, this has to be done exactly the right way. You can't mess around. We can't have any of these Medicaid whoopsies that just, oh, well, oh, you know, small mistake, whatever, no big deal. No, it actually can be a cripplingly bad big deal. So we want to make sure that our clients stay on the game plan. Be patient. It doesn't happen overnight. Anytime you're dealing with a government agency, you can't really expect things to happen overnight. But it should be done correctly. So I hope you found that information useful. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If Especially if you're a professional or attorney, financial advisor, accountant, who's going to be dealing with clients in the Medicaid planning area, Please subscribe to the channel and check out the playlist on Medicaid planning. Uh, we're also, we also have in the description below uh, the link for the Medicaid planning 
webinar, which leads you to the course on planning for Medicaid. Really good information as a, as a background for you. So I hope you found it useful. As I always tell my clients, please stay safe, plan ahead, and enjoy life. And whatever you do, make it a great day.